Joining us now, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. You know what Tammy Bruce said after that, that rally last night? And you can see it. The president loves the people of this country. The president, the, the, the enemies of the president are all the swamp creatures. You know, Republican and Democrat. And, and apparently FBI people, too. But um, it's amazing the connection that he has with them. And it's like the American people have now gotten used to his rhythm, his tone, his cadence, his tweets, his controversies. And all the feigned outrage in the world is not going to impact their view of him. Well, I think that's right. Remember, last night is in Duluth, Minnesota, which 25 years ago was hardcore Democratic territory. Mm -hmm. And here he has 9,000 people showing up in a place where no other Republican, maybe Reagan at his very peak could have come close, but no other Republican can get that size crowd and that level of enthusiasm. And it tells you that that Trump has intuited something profound about where the American people are. Mm -hmm. Well... I will tell you this, and I, I, I'm watching this whole immigration thing unfold here, and you know, I went through a very long monologue about this last night, and the most outrageous part of it is that this was not the president's law. This is the law that he fixed. Obama said that no president has the constitutional authority to do what Donald Trump did yesterday, and I would argue it's never going to hold up in court, so it's a temporary fix. Congress is going to have to act. But Congress passed this law, another president signed this into law, and a president doesn't have the right to pick and choose what laws he wants to enforce or, in, or in, go along with. He does, has no choice if we're going to follow the Constitution. Well, he, I do think there's one additional thing they should do, and that is file an appeal to the Supreme Court on the grounds that Americans are being endangered. I remember, this is all the act of one judge. Uh, and I think we ought to get in the habit of... of uh, pushing hard when one judge is a cuckoo <laughs> and not just automatically saying oh this is a court decision well, well you know what they're going to do they go judge shopping <clears throat> no no but i said they should right so, so we should get the automatic habit of taking it straight to the supreme court and saying you should suspend this decision on the grounds that it's threatening the lives of americans to me it's a national security issue you know there was a big fight yesterday with ryan and meadows on the house floor and I know what the fight was about because I talked to people that heard it. And it was about basically Meadows calling out Ryan saying, your talking points do not match what's in this bill. And he said, I'm done. I'm done with all of this. And how often does the swamp pull that trick on us? Well, it's constant. I mean, you, you have the Democrats on their side, by the way, did the same thing. They uh, introduced a bill and got every single Democrat in the Senate to sign up to it. And when you actually look at the bill... It would provide open access for 80% of the country to virtually anybody who wanted to come into the U.S. It basically takes down every border we have. Uh, and I think that the <clears throat> Democrats who were in states that Trump carried are going to find it almost impossible to go home and defend why they would co-sponsor a bill that would open up the whole country to illegal immigration. You know, it's a really scary time. Um Andy McCarthy's on at the bottom of this half hour, and I like Andy a lot. Andy has written some amazing pieces about the IG report and about the Mueller investigation. And the headline of his piece is, The IG report should end Mueller's obstruction investigation. But I would argue that now that we know that we had all of the lead investigators in the case investigating Clinton that that literally protected her from being indicted. I mean, the laws were broken. There's no ambiguity here. The facts are the facts. It's irrefutable. Then they immediately begin the process of the, of the Russia investigation. Now, legally, to me, that would render the entire investigation illegitimate from the get-go. Oh, I think that's right. In fact, I think it ought to, it ought to render every single indictment Mueller has brought as poison fruit. This investigation should never have occurred. The people who launched it were totally prejudiced, and clearly so. Uh, it's impossible to read their comments and reach any conclusion except that they were deep bitter, anti-Trump, pro-Clinton people, and it also raises the question of reopening the Clinton investigation. There's no question that Clinton and her closest aides broke a whole series of federal laws, and in any kind of honest process, she would never have been the Democratic nominee because she would have been indicted. Mm -hmm. It really, you know, why is she not now being fully investigated now that we know the whole... she should be. I asked you... I oh, asked you that the other night. Well, no, no, no. Don't be sorry, because I asked you the other night. You said the same thing, and I'm like, nobody's talking about it, I guess, except me and, you know, you. 
Well, I, look, I feel very strongly that Attorney General Sessions has no excuse anymore to recuse himself. This report totally eliminates that excuse. He should take control of the Justice Department, and he should aggressively go after people who've broken the law. And that means going after Hillary Clinton and most of her key people. Uh, and the, the, in my mind, I, mean, I don't see how any reasonable person could believe that if somebody's using a hammer to break up smartphones and is using bleach bit to destroy the hard drives, that they aren't breaking the law. I mean, this stuff, you know, this is the kind of stuff you wouldn't write in a novel because it's too crazy. You know, I, I love your new book, by the way, and I'm very proud of you because it's another runaway huge success. And it, it just came out last week, and it's a New York Times bestseller already, Trump's America, the Truth About Our Nation's Great Comeback. Number one, you do something that I think I'm the only one else in the media that's done, and that's tell the truth about the president's success, which is the most undertold story in politics today because it's a transformation. And number two, then you go through in the second part of this book and you give warnings, challenges, admonitions to the president, and these are real threats to his presidency, the fake news media. Did you hear it last night, them chanting CNN sucks, the crowd, how loud it was? <laughs> no. I heard them chanting Space Force, but I did not hear him chanting that. No, the, the, uh, well, I just played it. You missed it. Well, let me play it again for the speaker so you can hear oh, this. Yeah, play, play it for me. I need to hear this. Okay. So we've created 3.4 million new jobs since Election Day. 3.4. And I've said before, if I would have said that to you during the campaign, those very dishonest people back there, the fake news... said he's exaggerating. And by the way, we're not amplifying the sound, sir. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I have to tell you, one of my conclusions, having had a chance now to live in Europe for a while, is that we don't need to worry about the, the Russian propaganda program. CNN does more to cripple America and more to communicate a negative, hostile view of America than anything that our opponents are doing. I mean, it is astonishing to talk to people whose primary source of information internationally is CNN and the totally dishonest view they get. It's, someday someone's going to write an expose and walk through. Uh, I, I don't know what was in their minds, but they clearly went off the deep end. And, and have become a culture that is just amazingly destructive. We're going to take a quick break. More comments uh, and observations. Former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich is a New York Times bestseller. It's on bookstores, in bookstores now, on Hannity.com, Amazon.com. It's a great book, Trump's America, The Truth About Our Nation's Great Comeback. Oh, finally some good news. <laughs> All right, former Speaker of the House, Snoo Kingrich with us. His brand new book, it's on bookstore, on bookstore shelves now and uh, on Amazon.com, Hannity.com, Trump's America, the truth about our nation's great comeback. Um, what do we do as it relates to the president and an immigration bill that apparently the Senate doesn't want to deal with? How does he get the wall funding up front? How does he get that money? I would argue he could probably get it through national security means. Well, he could do that, I, but I think also uh, he could uh, go to the mat. First of all, if they can't pass a comprehensive bill this afternoon, uh, I certainly hope they're going to come back with a very narrow bill that solves specifically the problem of separating children and does so in terms that uh, still protect the border, uh, and then send it from the House to the Senate and let the President and Schumer uh, fight for two or three weeks over why Schumer cares more about politics than he does about children. I think the Democrats will crumble. I think that uh, in the red states, the Democrats are in bad shape on this issue, and we should not allow the elite news media to panic us into any other belief. I think in terms of, of spending, they've got to get the defense bill through, uh, and I think that's very important. And if they get the defense appropriations bill through, they can then go to the wall on a continuing resolution and say, look, if it doesn't include a... Uh, money for the wall it ain't getting signed yeah period and then he's got to be willing to go to the country and make the case as and i think he's been getting more and more effective at making this case i mean we're talking about genuinely bad people who are doing genuinely bad things nobody ever talks about the angel moms we interview them i know them by name i mean i'm friends with them they lost their kids nobody ever talks about that separation 
Yeah, yeah, there was a very excruciating article the other day by one of them who wrote and said, uh, I understand the pain of child separation, and then talked about it for a while. You're right. I mean, the elite media is so dishonest and so one-sided that I think you just mm-hmm. has, you have to take it head on day after day after day. And then the truth is we're winning. I mean, if you look at... The uh, president going directly to the American people is a right. huge, um, well, I won't say weapon, but it's a huge antidote, if you will, to the corrupt media. Um, all right, so you, are you, where do people go to find you on your book tour, by the way? Okay, well, um, th- th- we're going to be back uh, doing some more things. Uh, I'm actually calling you from the airport because I have to go and be with the ambassador for a little while. Yeah, your life's so hard. Mr. Speaker, thank you.